Greetings and welcome to Let's Play My Channel Logo. Oh. It's hot again. Hate it. Last week was so beautiful. Oh, coming home and not dying. That's such a great feeling. You can't imagine it. Um, I have three things I wanted to talk about. Uh, the first thing is games I've been playing recently, which will be pretty shortish, <laughs> since I mostly come home and just go to bed and slowly die. Um, I, I, the second topic will be early access and what was it? Episodic gaming. I asked on Facebook about a topic. And my best friend sent me a private message and he asked me to talk about this. Oh, sounds interesting. It's an interesting topic. <coughs> I have a lot of thoughts to talk about that. And the third thing is that I want to suggest... 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 suggest yeah, that, that was the word. <laughs> uh, some streamers that I regularly watch or where you will most likely find me when they're streaming. And yeah, yeah. What I've been playing. Um, I bought Breach and Clear plus the zombie expansion of GOG, which looks like a pretty fun game. Uh, looked like a pretty fun game. And it is a pretty fun game. I... Uh, I played a little bit. It has some some minor flaws, some nitpicking stuff. Like uh, the the game design is you you have uh, a group of um, anti terror units. I chose the KSK because well, Germany. <laughs> um, and then you have you you can plan your turn. So you can tell them you move to this area, you move to this area, you use a bandage, you throw a flashbang, stuff like that. And then it plays off the turn. One turn is about four seconds in game time. And then you carry on planning and they shoot automatically. And if there's an enemy inside, they start shooting him, stuff like that. My problem with this game is that you can't really plan like uh, you move there, open the door, that takes one second and then the other guy in the meantime prepares a flashbang and throws it in the door. The door has to be open in order to tell the other guy to throw the flashbang into the room, which is in my opinion kind of stupid. <laughs> it takes two seconds to uh, ready a flashbang and that two seconds somebody can open the door already. Yeah. Minor gripe. You just have to make sure that one of your guys ends the turn next to a door so he automatically opens it. That's kind of it. Um, on, on negative stuff. Uh, I think it has some in-game shop. I haven't really looked too much in, into that. You can buy most stuff where you get you earn money with missions that's what i've been grinding it's not really that hard you don't need everything <laughs> that's the thing uh, and so it, it's a quite fun i haven't played the zombie expansion yet i haven't even installed it yet but if if you like strategy games i mm, i can suggest that it's not that deep tactical shooter like jack the lines or so but still quite fun. Um, the other game, I haven't really played it too much, just a little bit, is 20XX. Which is a roguelike um, jump and run with auto-generated levels. It kind of feels and plays and looks like Mega Man. Mega Man the X series. You can choose between a, a blue lady robot that shoots that shoots and a red male robot that has a sword weapon. Hmm, <laughs> hmm. sounds familiar. 
Yeah, um, it's been fun so far. It's also in early access. I I usually shy away from early access games unless the game looks really nice. But the game was like, yeah, doing early access, we are five bucks cheaper. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's a, that's something I can live with. <laughs> okay, the big topic, uh, early access. I personally dislike early access. Um, I have the feeling games that are in early access are like for 20,000 years in early access. Granted, the, uh, let's say, the arch daddy <laughs> of early access, Minecraft, was also pretty long in early access, but it also kind of had a finished game to it. The, the basis was there and they just added stuff to it. That was... Well, I came in pretty late into the... Well, I, no, I did buy it pretty early and it had almost nothing. You could build stuff, but there was no craft, no real craft, I think. I don't know. doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> so I came back later with Minecraft and then they added the adventure mode and that was kind of it. Mm. The thing that I really prefer with the Minecraft model was that Minecraft was cheaper, doing better. And I have no problem if an early access game is cheaper doing early access. Because let's be honest, you are paying to be a beta tester. You are paying to do a what to, to be a quality um what was it uh to be a way to be a quality manager you are paying to be some sort of designer with your suggestions and whatnot so <laughs> that's a lot of stuff that they usually had to pay for beforehand in order to you know uh get the game out and I mean, yeah, okay. Exam counter example: Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is one of the few games where I say, okay, early access was is awesome. It is awesome to play in early access. But again, it was about finished. Um, I mean, yes, they announced two more dungeons with the darkest dungeon, the name giving dungeon itself missing, but um, they could have sold this as an expansion pack or a DLC or whatever for five bucks more later on. Like you, you buy the game in early access or you buy the game, it's ten bucks cheaper than it is now and then you buy the two other things for five. Just throwing out numbers. I wouldn't buy one dungeon for five bucks. <laughs> it's not really worth it, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm kind of like this. It would have worked out, in my opinion, too. Maybe. I don't know. Um, then we have stuff like Towns. Towns was, in my opinion, the, the, the arch daddy of why something like Early Access was needed on Steam. Because Towns was a buggy, unfinished piece piece of shit. And they just abandoned it. And that's my main problem with these early access games. I don't know how many early access games I have. Some I trust. There's one Dream. Where are you? Where are you? Dream. The game is called Dream. I don't even know if it's finished. It would be nice if Steam would like show yeah still in early access or so like on the front page. Um, it was marketed as uh, it was shown like in the, in the trailer on Steam like a horror game, like oh crazy stuff is going on. I was like oh that looks really awesome. And then I bought it and it turns out it's just uh, some sort of gone home type of game, like you watch, you just walk around and explore stuff. Uh, the, the horror part is I guess later in the game or so, well, not just a small thing, I, I don't know, it, it just, it, it just, and 
I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. Then there's stuff like Space Space DF9. Fucking Tim Schafer. I have to mention again, um, Tim Schafer, if the if you write him in English, R-A, instead of the umlaut, A, uh, has the same letters then as Mr. Shitface. I'm, I'm fairly certain there's a connection to this. <laughs> that, that's not just a coincidence. Anyways, double fine. The one. Mm, let me think. Yeah, I would say the only company so far that I'm boycotting had Space Space DF9 on sale in early access, 50% off, and I was like, oh, it looks like a nice deal. It will be finished when it's all finished. <laughs> Two weeks later, they released version 1.0 with no changes to the build that I bought and abandoned the project. Let it what? And that's what you get with early access. That's also the same as Kickstarter. I don't know if somebody is keeping up to date with Mighty Number no. 9. The, the, the graphics and stuff they showed on the Kickstarter. It's way, way higher quality than the actual game. And they got a lot of money. <laughs> Same with Broken Age. I, I, what was the, what was the um, original Kickstarter maximum of Broken Age? 400,000? And it got like 3 million? And he released it in two parts? And the second part is... I, I have to... I have to I have to. Uh, I haven't played the game. I have to say this beforehand. I watch Yatsi's review of both of them, so I don't know if this is true. If it's not true, correct me. I don't care. <laughs> and the second part is kind of like the first part, just kind of mirrored, like the, uh, the guy you play in Area A, and the girl you play in Area B is switched around. So the girl is in Area A, and the guy is in Area B, and with nothing, no new NPCs, no new background, no new nothing. A little bit of dialogue and some riddles. Uh, that's what people paid three million for, and it was released later on. And <laughs> I don't know. It's a scam for me, in my opinion. It's a scam. There, are... you you usually hear more negative things than positive things. Positive things. Um... FTL was funded by Kick by Kickstarter. Darkest Dungeon was funded via Kickstarter. Darkest Dungeon Early Access, totally fine, totally okay. I have no problem with a new studio starting off with Kickstarter. That's you know Kickstarter. That's the, the name of the game. But if every game you create <laughs> has to be funded by Kickstarter first. Which seems to be the case with uh, f with Kickstarter or Early Access or whatever. And you're literally paying for a... With Kickstarter for nothing. For the, the imagination that something may come out of it. They may never release a final product. I have no idea why so many people are th throwing money at Kickstarter projects <laughs> are they are they so i don't know if, if it's like a new concept like fdl fdl was a pretty newish game okay it's a woke like and so but it hasn't been like this so far then we have stuff like uh starbound i think starbound is still in early access we have uh windforge I don't know if this is early access. And uh, Journey to the Stars or something. Three Terraria clones. <laughs> All early access or... Fun I don't know. It's, it's, it's horrible. I mean, you, you are literally paying for nothing or for being a beta tester in the case of Kickstarter. Uh, in the case of early access. With very few exceptions. I'm really very buying... I, I really have to enjoy the game. It has to look like a game that I would pour 
several hours in, even if they never release it. <laughs> so 20XX needs to entertain me for at least five hours, so uh, the 10 euro <laughs> uh, payment is done. Darkest Dungeon, okay, that was that was a good one. I don't know what else I bought in Early Access. I have a lot of games on my wish list that are Early Access. Is the forest still Early Access? Then you have the, the ho all, all of these zombie shooting thingies. These 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 uh, running simulators, like people on Twitch like to call them. Daisy, Ark, okay, Ark is dinosaurs instead of zombies. Ooh, H1Z1, everything, Early Access. And pay to win, and <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Another thing he asked me to talk about is this episodic gaming. And I have to say, the idea behind episodic gaming is not bad for, again, a new studio. Or if an established studio wants to check for a new IP. Like they... They want to create something new, so they have to. So they can put all the eggs in one basket, pay two hundred thousand for it, and just whoop, <laughs> release it and hope for the best. Or they try cutting it a little bit in, in in smaller pieces. The main thing with episodic gaming is that it has to be released really quickly. And by the time the first episode is out, they already have to start working or already work have been working on the second episode, which kind of nullifies the soul. Oh yeah, let's see how it works out, kind of thing. But take Half Life, <laughs> episode one, episode two. Where's episode three? It's still on a cliffhanger, as far as I know. Where's Half Life three? <laughs> Uh, or other games that um, I think Wolf's Goa on Twitch also says that he, he's not playing Life is Strange because he wants to wait until all episodes are out because he, he's making decisions now and half a year later he doesn't know any, the details of the game anymore so he m might do totally different decisions than he would have done if he had given these decisions like immediately and especially if these games are like really shortish. I think one episode of Life is Strange is what, one hour? How long do they take to make these? They are waking in the morning. Waking in the morning. <laughs> Taking ages to release the full game. I don't know. I, I, for a new studio, it's okay. Some Or, or, or something like... Um, there's this, this, um, adventure game studio game, uh, Ben something, Ben Jordan, that was also, of course, in episodes, because it, it was finished games between each, so it wasn't really episodic, but, I don't know, it, it has, if they can churn out these things, like, once per month or so, like, you, you pay five bucks, you get... Two hours of entertainment every month, and you just kind of have like a story going on. That that would be maybe something, but everything else, waiting half a year. That's that's <laughs> that's like if if George R. R. Martin would release every book that he has, like in in cuts, like he he releases the first book, Song of Ice and Fire, and he released the first 10 pages and three months later he releases another 10 pages and another one and another until you finally have to... I don't know, I, I wouldn't read that. I, have to, I also have the feeling it's detrimental for the company because a lot of people may lose interest if it takes too long. At least I would... Uh, that would happen to me. <laughs> if, if I play a game and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's cool and... Half a year later, I would have forgot that I actually played the game, <laughs> or that the game exists. Uh, somebody has to tell me, like, hey, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's... 
for new studios, okay, release it as fast as possible. But every, everything else is just, I don't know, stupid, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm a big fan of just having finished games, released games. I have no DLC stuff um, if it doesn't really add something to the game. If it's just like different costumes, that's something I can live with. I hate day one DLC, you know they cut stuff out to sell it to you more. I mean, yeah, game development may have been more expensive for AAA A's, but I also have to say that they try to make it cheaper. <laughs> it. I mean, yeah, people are always... It's also a little bit with the consumers, of course. It's not always the AAA studios. It's also the consumers. Like, imagine... imagine go back a few... A few uh, 10, 20 years or so. I, I don't know um, when exactly Baldur's Gate came out. They made the Infinity Engine. Baldur's Gate. Woo, yay! Awesome. A few months or pff, shortish later, they made... Icewind Dale, also in the same engine. It looked literally the same. That was totally okay. <laughs> Nowadays, if they release a game with similar graphics or similar engine, people are like, hey, that looks similar, that's stupid. I mean, we, we don't have to go back to the Unreal Engine <laughs> time where everything really looked... <laughs> even different games from different companies looked the same because they were all in the Unreal Engine. But... Uh, I really have no problem with that. If it makes the games cheaper to produce and it's less of a risk for studios. But then again, I am still stuck in the 80s, 90s with my gaming, so... <laughs> I... It's the same with Might and Magic X. Uh, they could release this as a new one with the same engine. Okay, I wouldn't play it because the engine sucks and it doesn't play well on my computer. But take the guys from Grimrock. I'm fairly certain it was the similar engine, same engine. They just beefed it up a little bit. And they released Grimrock 2, what? One year later? I have, I have no... Legend of Grimwalk. I have no feeling for time anymore. I I don't know when <laughs> certain games got released and so on and so forth. So excuse me, princess, if I get some times wrong. I'm checking at the moment. Legend of Grimwalk. The first game got released 2012. So the second took... When did I play it? This year or last year? Must have been last year, I wasn't... I wasn't... I was it April. April 2012. So the second... Oh, come on, load. I have a fucking 100 Mbit. Thing. Why does it take so long? Uh, finish... Uh, October 2012. Okay. So April to October, well, two, two and a half years about. Oh, it's okay. Same engine, different game, totally, totally different game. Well, not totally different. It was still a dungeon crawler, but you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a fan of episodic gaming. I'm not a fan of early access. I'm not a fan of Kickstarters that never turn out to be as good as they announced it. I'm not supporting Kickstarters. I, that's my, that's one of the big things I just do not do, supporting Kickstarters. I don't even think I can, <laughs> because Kickstarter, I think, doesn't really work with Patreon. Uh, Patreon, PayPal, I don't know. It's just, uh, I want a finished game. <laughs> if I pay money, I want a game that finished. There's this, this, this um, futuristic thing from the guy who made Wing Commander, I, Chris something, I forgot his name. 
Uh, and I also forgot the name of the game that also seems to be a sinking ship at the moment. There was some other game developer, Derek Smart, who was just like, it's not possible to make a game like this at the moment. <laughs> not with these funds. But people buttered in millions and millions, and it's so much wasted money. Same with fucking uh, Star Wars of Knights of the Old Republic. This, this, this MMO. 200 billion. Bam! Down the drain. I don't know. They, they could do so much good in the world with 200 million. Give it to the homeless or so. It would have been, it would have been better. Uh, at least they, they would have been getting better PR. <laughs> like, produce a good game that only costs like 50 million and then give 150 million to the homeless to get good PR and then people buy the, the other game a lot more and then you make a lot more money. <laughs> Something like that. I'm pretty sure that will work out. Pretty well. Anyways. Um... <laughs> Streamers I've been watching recently, uh, not recently, even recently, I usually, I'm usually in Meta Sigma's stream. At the moment he's routing some fan-made pony game. <laughs> he usually speed one secret of Evermore. And he's streaming usually when I, pretty late at my time, so... I watch him before I usually go to bed and stuff, you know, while I'm going to bed and just let him scream me into sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, he would do with speedruns evermore. He did Super Island Adventure 2 as a speedrun. I think he's the world record holder there. At the moment he's preparing for a... <laughs> My Little Pony RPG Maker fan game that looks... It is carbon copy of Final Fantasy 1, that's the funny thing. <laughs> and it's just horrible, mate. Ugh. But it's quite fun to watch. It's a pretty entertaining stream. I, I wish I could be as energetic like him and interact so happy with the chat, but... Oh well. Um, other stream I regularly watch is Paladin Lord 10. I will put the links in my description. Um, Paladin Lord plays a lot of roguelikes. He, at the moment, plays a lot of uh, Path of Exile. Usually, or sometimes, ending the stream with a little bit of the pit. Pretty good game. I wish I had like one hundredth of his knowledge of the pit. He, The games he plays, he is very knowledgeable in. He knows... He knows how to play them, he also shares a lot of his knowledge. So if you have questions regarding these games, he's happy to share. And... Yeah. Yeah. Another stream I usually regularly watch is Ezekiel. Well, of course, and Cole Carnage, but... Uh, Cole Carnage has enough viewers. <laughs> Ezekiel, I'm usually also in his stream. There is no... There is no priority list. Like, if, if Meta Sigma, Paladin, and Ezekiel all stream at the same time, then it depends on my mood who I watch. <laughs> Mainly, I usually I watch one on my desktop and another one on my iPad. Um, Ezekiel still tries to beat the Boshi <laughs> since months now. It's a game I would never play. I, I would just get so pissy at the game like all the time I, I'm playing I'm also playing a little bit of Binding of Isaac at the moment on and off and I get so pissed at the game I have like a, a win streak or a lose streak of minus 37 because I just get so pissed at everything and <laughs> yeah he tries to be the boshi he's usually a variety streamer playing all kinds of things and he's quite fun to watch he's quite fun to watch Anyways, I thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see each other soon, so take care and goodbye.